hundreds of millions of dollars for exhibition golf. Let's follow the money. Live Golf is funded by Saudi Arabia's Wealth Fund. Saudi Arabia gets its money from oil. Oil they sell to Americans. And now they're driving gas prices even higher. The Saudis are using oil profits to fund exhibition golf, hoping to distract you from their policies of oppressing women, murdering journalists, and supporting the 9-11 terrorists. That is so sad that our politicians that was in power during 9-11 has allowed for this to occur illegitimately against their own people. As far as I'm concerned, the people that should be held liable for high treason, which is bad enough with what Donald Trump tried to pull pull the wool over people's eyes here in America and starting a uh, basically a, a, national, a national riot against various people in the Capitol. But it was the very people that was in the Capitol, or let me put it this way, it was the very people that's been in power associated with the Capitol for the past 30 plus years that has been a part of this whole scenario of injustice that has been committed upon to the American people towards 9-11 that was sponsored by Saudi Arabians and their dirty, bloody, dark money that now they're bedding down with poisonous Putin in purposely wanting to stifle the oil production so that they can drive the prices up that much further and harm and hurt that many more people in the world. It's a clear indication that these people over there that we called our allies could give a rat's you-know-what pertaining to the benefit and the well-being of not only the American people, but the vast majority of the world, because this that poisonous Putin is involved in is not just affecting high prices over here in America, but it's affecting high prices all over the planet. And of course, if you jack up the energy prices, you jack up the food prices. If you jack up both together, there's going to be a lot of people this fall and this winter, <clears throat> especially over in the Europe, uh, UK, um, Sweden, not so much Sweden because they've got uh, plenty of money, or, or most of them do, but there's going to be a lot, a lot of people that's going to hurt this this winter that's either going to have to choose between between heat and not buying medication or buying medication and not buying food or not being able to buy food just to be able to stay warm. There's going to be a lot of dis disruptancies happening in people's lives just on account of these people that I've been telling people about now for 30 plus years of the existence of this physical Luciferian Lucifer that has stuck its ugly head out in people now identifying who actually plotted and masterminded 9-11. To this day, the Cheneys, the Bushes, those that was associated with uh, Ronald Reagan and, and Mr. Senior Bush H. Uh, what is his name? Um, I call him Senior Bush. Senior Bush um, has not given an account towards the latest discoveries that the FBI and the U.S. Marshals have now come across in identifying a money trail to where we know for a fact that it was the Saudis that was financing the very terrorists that come to America that killed almost 3,000 people. It's come full circle in identifying who was actually in behind 9-11. And we as an Americans, rather than us punishing those who was supposed to have been the watchman on the wall in preventing stuff like this from occurring. Rather than punishing them, we're still patting them on the back or letting them get away with what has occurred here that has basically 
turned our country and this planet totally upside down. So, if there was ever a time that we, as good, strong Christian Americans, needed to stick together in identifying what has happened here pertaining to this this uh, uh, this travesty or this latrocity that has occurred, it is today more essential than any other time pertaining to seeing true justice performed in regards towards us being under siege and under attack and basically being bought out by our own people from within. And to think that the founder of the Windmill Ministries has had to have gone through all this anguish, all this relentless pain, all these embarrassing situations beginning in Kenton, Tennessee in 1983, to think that the founder of the Windmill Ministries has been rejected gener about on two or three different generations because of all the lies and all the deceit that, that they wanted to put out there about the founder of the Windmill Ministries, to think that I had to go through this type of hell because of all this makes my blood boil. It outrages me pertaining to what has occurred here in regards towards not just the Saudis in behind 9-11, <clears throat> but the fact that there were so many people here in America that dropped the ball that either didn't recognize it or covered it up because they was afraid that if they fully disclosed what was going on, it was going to cause havoc in the White House. You don't think that these people that we have hired and put in these high-ranking positions are going to be held accountable one day in the world to come, in the hereafter? You're doggone right they will be. And it ain't just politicians. It was a whole lot of evangelists and preachers at that time that knew that what had occurred in the individual's life that's sitting in behind this camera right now talking, they knew that those events was in fact factual. They knew. But they sat idly by and they let America basically become Satan's personal whipping post, which has now put us where we are today. Actually, if it does anything, it, it, remor it remorsefully sickens me to think that we had good, sound people that we thought was good, sound people pertaining to the Bush family, <clears throat> that their originality of oil, crude oil, goes all the way back even before uh, Walter H. Bush, Bush's life. Um, his father was an oil typhoon. It went all the way back into the, I guess, the 30s or the 40s <clears throat> in dealing with Saudi Arabia. And to think that so many of our, of our uh, grand politicians and preachers slid it over to the side and acted like that it wasn't going to be discovered. It's sickening. It breaks my heart. And you know if it breaks my heart towards me being still in a hu hu human form, you know good and well how harsh that it breaks God the Father's heart. Especially after it occurring 21 years ago, 21 years ago was whenever that occurred, that has basically been the beginning of the end towards turning not only America but the world totally upside down on account of this, this uh, deceitful deception of how a group of people thought that they was going to do something and get away with it. And get away with it. It's a heartbreak that goes beyond anything that I've ever read about or studied about pertaining to our American history. <clears throat> I guess if I was to put it any, in any type of category, it would be in the category of, of the Trojan horse over in Troy whenever they was given a gift that they thought was a gift that wound up being to their own personal demise um, towards a bunch of the soldiers that hid inside the Trojan horse that after the Trojan horse got pushed <coughs> into the inner gates later that night, 
they escaped out of the horse and attacked the village and brought uh, harm and hurt to uh, to the whole village, to the whole um, association. Um, if, if I was to put it in any category, it would be in that same category that our people were so naive or stupid. Or maybe it was because of money, power, greed, I don't know. But they allowed for something like this to fall up onto the American people's lives. <clears throat> to this day, I myself is still suffering the consequences on account of these seeds of destruction that was planted on account of all this beginning in the White House and beginning in and with Homeland Security Secret Service. To this day, they're still telling malicious lies and not listening to the things that I'm telling them. As far as I know that they are. <clears throat> I ain't seen nobody come and try to make a recompense with me in regards towards all this that has occurred. And I guess what they're hoping, they're hoping that I'll eventually, <clears throat> as the old saying goes, well, if you, if you give somebody enough rope, they'll eventually hang themselves. You know, that rope hanging goes both ways. The rope hanging goes both ways. And basically, the American politicians and the corrupt preachers have hung themselves. It has taken 30 plus years of abuse, 30 plus years of being victimized, 30 plus years of being looked down upon, mocked, made fun of, lost a brother in the middle of a battle because of being attacked, being hunted right here on our own property at 430 Beach Grove Road or 291 Thompson Road. It has taken 30 something years to finally see it come full course to come back around. What goes around comes back around towards the embarrassment that this United States government has subjected their own people towards not only in not telling the truth about 9-11, but going to war with Saddam Hussein, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, come to find out there wasn't no bombs of mass destruction that basically just created a vacuum for more of these left-wing extremist terrorists to uh, invade or go off into, go into war with the Afghanistan war for 20 plus years and 11 days later, the very people that we thought was going to fight the Taliban was the very people that laid down and let them take back over their own property, their own lives. It has been one embarrassment after another embarrassment after another embarrassment that, as far as I am concerned, began right here in northwest Tennessee in a little town called Kenton, Tennessee in 1983, whenever I first started talking about this fleshly, demonic, Luciferian Lucifer that is now walking around in a fleshly body the same as all the other homo sapiens. A matter of fact, they made fun because I've had people walk up to me and say, man, you don't really and truly believe that. If you'd have stood in front of the Antichrist and let him strike you with an arrow and before the arrow actually hits your flesh, that you would vaporize or disappear, that, that basically every molecule in your body would, would, uh, would be transfigurated from mortal to immortal in the twinkling of an eye. And I'd look at them and I'd say, if I didn't believe it at the time that I said it, I never would have said it. So yes, whenever you're talking about the transfiguration of the, of the natural, going into the supernatural, pertaining to how that the Bible talks about that Gable will blow the trumpet, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who are alive and, uh, and uh, those who are alive and remain will be caught up to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. You dig I'm right, I believe that. I believe that all of the Christians that are alive and well during the time that Gable blows the trumpet and God returns back uh, for his precious people during the time for his rewarding of the of the meek or the elect. Uh, yes, I believe that all of our bodies will be transfigurated from mortal to immortal in the twinkling of an eye and that we will be transfigurated in an instant, the Bible says. We're talking about the supernatural occurring. 
It just so happens I missed the mark on on me going to meet the Antichrist. Uh, this Luciferian Lucifer over in Saudi Arabia is not the actual Antichrist. He admitted to that whenever he was a child growing up that had these remarkable powers as far as him being the magic man. He admitted that he was not the Antichrist, but he was a follower of the Antichrist. And what the church world here in the Western world didn't understand, that before the opening of the false prophet and the Antichrist, pertaining to the third and the fourth horsemen of out of the seven seals, is that there was supposed to have been a actual physical Luciferian Lucifer that was just as much predicted towards it happening in the end time events as it was predicted going all the way back thousands of years ago before Jesus ever come into the existence that Jesus Christ would come in a fleshly physical form. These are all prophecies. It says in the Bible that, that all things that has been written will be fulfilled in the last days. All things. Not just part of all things. All things. And to think that I got ridiculed to think that I got persecuted, to think that I got demonized, to think that I got humiliated the way that I did, goes beyond anything comprehensible. Just as of last night, I thought that I had recognized this young girl that worked up here in Royal King because I'd been in there three or four times this summer. She must have got her job just within the past year or so. But she basically is one of the daughters to, to one of the families out here that my brother and I had so much trouble with. Something come up about who she was and something come up about who I was. And I asked her, I said, well, do you know who I am? She said, yeah, you're Dennis. She goes, don't you know who I am? I go, well, I think I know who you are, but I'm not going to say who you are unless you're going to admit who you are. And she did. She admitted who she was. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say it on, on, on this particular video. Even though she's above age, she's 18. She goes, uh, well, I was too young to know about what all was going on way back then. Because at that time, whenever my brother actually become deceased, she would have been basically 13. And all the stuff leading into her becoming 13, she basically, she was basically about nine years old when her brother first come back here. And I looked at her, I said, I'm not going to blame you for my brother's death because you didn't have nothing to do with what was going on out here as far as the uh, bad behavior in regards towards your people that was doing what they was doing intentionally to the degree that I wound up losing a brother on account of it. I go, but you do have to admit that their actions went beyond normalcy to the point of being just absolutely bizarre, bizarre behavior that a group of people was being motivated by Satan, the demonic spirits out here, that they thought that they was going to either be able to run old Juby off, the one that's sitting in behind the camera right now talking, or they thought that Juby was going to be stupid to the degree that Juby wound up taking the law into his own hands, or David possibly, or both. Because you keep in mind the same family that I'm talking about took my brother down on his own property four or five years before I ever come back here in 20 and 14. David went to court with him and Tommy Moore took the charges and told them all out. Which I told Tommy Moore the other day whenever I bumped into him up in Dresden whenever he evaluated my, uh, my voting privileges back. I told him, I said, Tommy, you're to blame for a lot of this because... This was going on before I ever come back here. And I said, the more that you let people get away with stuff, the more that they're going to think that they can continue to get away with stuff. I said, I never should have had to have come back here in 20 and 14 and dealt with such outlandish behavior that had been going on with my family and this other family or two out here way before I ever even stepped into the picture. I go, if you would have punished them properly and adequately, I really don't think that they would have taken this as far as what they did towards actually bringing this type of remorse and stress and anguish into not only my life, but David's life to the point that David couldn't stand it. And basically all the stress 
and the tension and the embarrassment and being ridiculed the way that he was, he couldn't take it. He couldn't handle it. It drove him to an early death at the age of 51. And it actually drove me to a state of worser health. I was already suffering to begin with because of being poisoned up in Kentucky by Judge Woodall by ta force, forcefully uh, making me take this drug called Risperdal. I was already failing in health. I just didn't know how badly that my health was declining at that time. But then whenever all this happened, oh God, it just throwed me off into a state of depression uh, unlike any other state of depression that I'd ever been in. And that's exactly what these people wanted out here. They wanted to drive me to my own death. But instead of driving me to my own death or driving me out, they actually drove my brother, my youngest brother at the age of 51, after they, they had already physically assaulted him by taking his own gun, putting it to his head, and trying to activate the gun. The only thing that saved his life was the gun that he bought uh, uh, somehow or another in the struggle. The, the clip fell out of the gun. The gun had a safety feature on it to where the gun would not actively shoot, even though it had a bullet in the chamber, if the clip was not in the gun. So basically, I told Tommy Moore up here at the courthouse, I said, David told me that whenever all that stuff was going on out here in their lives, this was before I ever come back, David told me that not only would I, would I have had to have went to my older brother's grave that died that year, that same year that all this was going on. And then my father died a few months later because of his declining health. But David looked at me. He said, you would have had to have went through. You would have had to have went to three funerals, Juby, three funerals. If that gun that I had purchased that fell out of my pocket, that this particular family grabbed up and put to my own head, that if it didn't have that safety feature on it, you would have went to three funerals versus only two, all within a year span. So whenever I talk about how that the law enforcement in this area and how that the general public has let this ministry down, it's not that this ministry has failed the public. It's that the public has failed this ministry. And I realize whenever I uh, bring a lot of this stuff out towards being the bad news bear. I realize that I hurt a lot of people's feelings. But which is worse? Your feelings getting hurt? Or your physical lives being hurt? The people where, that, where those buildings are smoking right there, they'll never, they'll never come into an existence again pertaining to their lives being here up onto the planet. And they suffered endlessly over a group of people that targeted them that they had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with. Absolutely nothing to do with. But some of our own politicians and some of our own preachers did have something to do with it. And they sit back and they act like that they're not guilty because of the things that they didn't do. But the thing about it is, that's what makes them guilty, is that they didn't do nothing. They didn't support the ideology of the windmill ministries that began 30 plus years ago here in Northwest Tennessee. And they stand back and say, well, we didn't do nothing to him. That's just it. You didn't do nothing for him. And you're going to be held just as guilty by not doing nothing for him than you would have been if you would have done something directly to him. That's the part that they don't or they act like that they don't understand, but I think in reality, they're going to understand it one day. They're going to understand that, that, uh, that the uh, mutiny, that, 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 Lucifer, that the, the spiritual Lucifer began the Antichrist up in heaven, that a third of the angels uh, wound up uh, having a brawl, a fight, a battle, war in heaven, the Bible talks about, that those two thirds that stuck together, they stuck together through the thick and the thin. It's the other third that was gullible that wound up following after that one bad entity, which was Lucifer himself. It's that third that didn't stand up with the other two thirds 
that will be held just as guilty as the perpetrator that started the mutiny to begin with, which was the very Antichrist up in heaven. And that's the way it's going to be up in up in the supernatural world. And that's also the way that it's going to be right here in our world. And people don't realize that, but it it's it's coming. Accountability issues are coming. And whatever a person has done, they'll be they'll be uh, held accountable for, or whatever that they didn't do that they should have done, they'll be held accountable for. And so will I. These are all the standards of the Heavenly Father. And once we start breaking them standards, consequences arises. And what you just got through hearing on TV are some of those consequences that has arisen just within the past 30 plus years since basically a resistance movement began right here in Northwest Tennessee over in Kenton, Tennessee, in City Hall, pertaining to Damien Cross and a bunch of dirty cops and a bunch of dirty people over there that after me going over, seeking some sort of help, the type of help that I got was destruction. The individual that's talking in behind this camera right now, he didn't receive a, a, a proper reading as far as putting out a SOS to those authority figures over there. It's unbelievable in the damage that they have created for not only the founder of the Windmill Ministries, but, but their own lives. It's unbelievable that the unaccountability that still uh, is, is, is residing amongst these people, that they still think that they have gotten away with this. And I'm just not talking about the terrorists that died or the people that financed the terrorists. I'm talking about the people right here in Tennessee that took a part in this. Thanks again to all of us. Good luck to all of us as we end this program by saying God bless America. God bless our troops and God bless America's endeavors towards where we go from this moment on. Thanks again. And yes, shalom. In the 9-11 terrorists. Our